Hi, Dan from MHCP, back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the C-2 Escape and Evasion Survival Kit that was used by Navy and Air Force uh, fighter pilots and other air crews during the Vietnam War. The Air Force alone flew 5.5 million sorties during the Vietnam War, losing 1,700 aircraft to enemy fire. So I'm sure a few of these were used, uh, at least. Uh, can't find a lot of data on them. If any uh, veterans out there watching that may have come in contact with one of these, feel free to comment below. Um, but the, the kit came in two, two pouches, and it was carried inside the survival vest worn by the pilots. So th this kit's only partially complete. Uh, complete ones are pretty rare, and they go for upwards of six to $800 from what I've seen. But we'll take a look at the kit and see what's inside of it. The first uh, piece was the medical side. So we'll open it up. came in these waterproof rubberized pouches that had a resealable top. Inside was this sleeve. Looks like a couple of things popped out. Originally, everything was kind of glued to the inside of this pouch here. So we'll lay some of this stuff out. We'll take a look at this stuff that came off in a minute. But So you can see a listing of some of the stuff that's inside of it. Liquid soap, cling bandage, sun and bug repellent, razor knife, fungal cider powder, burn, burning lens, aspirin tablets, insect repellent, leech repellent, eye ointment. Oop, more stuff flying up. Like I said, all this stuff was originally like sticky tack to the inside. Alertness tablets or fatigue, those are like an amphetamine tablet. Salt tablets, anti-motion sickness tablets. I believe that's the complete contents of what would have been originally inside here. Got this foil. This would have you could have used to heat, uh, collect water, heat water, cook with. So this is what's left in here. I don't know the history behind this particular kit. If it was maybe someone bought it surplus, used it for camping, or if maybe it was used in a training mission or even a real mission. Uh, it dates from 1968. So what's still left, we got the sun and bug repellent. Everything came inside these little plastic waterproof pouches. So that was item number three in the kit. Let's see, I'm trying to read... This is the leech repellent here. Oh, definitely good in Vietnam. They had a lot of leeches. Tree leeches and ones in the swamps and everything. Antiseptic ointment, so neosporin or bass and trace. And this is item number 10. Item 6, the eye ointment. Imagine if you got like a fungal infection or uh, something like that in your eye. That's what this is for. Another little bottle here. There's the liquid soap, antibacterial. Made by Hope Industries, Inc., New York, January 1968. This one's dated on there. Let's see. I was trying to read that other bottle, but it's pretty faded. A lot of the stuff is faded off here. This is the fungicidal powder, item number five, package January 1968. The rest is too hard to read, unfortunately. You got the band-aids, and um, these are Johnson & Johnson band-aids. It's item number 16. Check out Steve1989. He has a complete review of one of these, even with, and he has the uh, pen flare and everything, too, with it, which is pretty cool. Anti-chap lipstick. That can become in handy, especially if you're stuck somewhere really dry. Your lips start to get pretty chapped. So that's inside the medical kit, at least the remains here. Oh, and one other item. I forgot this. The uh, elastic gauze bandage made by Johnson & Johnson, August 1967. Still sealed on the package. So that's the remains of the medical kit. Um, most of it's here, but not all of it. The second half of the kit was the general purpose. Um, this one, you know, same thing, made in 1968. We'll take a look inside this one. Let's 
So those inner sleeves, I do believe, came inside this plastic bag. The kit, only one of them is remaining. Um, so you could use this bag for water purification. As it shows here, there's water purification tablets that are originally in the kit. And um, so you could collect water in this bag and then use it to uh, add the tablets in here and use this to purify your water. So I assume two came in the kit. I believe that's what the original, these sleeves were packed inside of. Couple of the items came loose here. I'll take a look at those in a sec. So here's the other half of the uh, kit. So in here would have been a candle, fishing kit, fishing line, compass, sewing kit, candy, water purification tabs, beef bowl on cubes, wire saw, mosquito head net, and mittens. One red and blue light filter. Let's see if it says. More on the other side. Signaling mirror, cake soap, antibacterial, waterproof matches and flint, knife, hacksaw, blade, use flare gun as handle. Uh, Steve shows you how to do that in his video. It's pretty cool. Sunglasses, fire starter sheets and tinder, rub flint. Oh, sorry, that's an instruction. Arrowhead, sponge, flashlight and cord, waterproof receptacle. So some really cool items inside this kit. It's kind of a really cool piece of Cold War technology. And this was all made by Hope Industries, Inc. Date of assembly, April 1968. So we'll look at what fell out here first. Here's the beef bouillon cubes. So you could have heated, put these in with some hot water. Uh, maybe if you had caught some fish or just to have them as themselves as a form of uh, some sustenance for you. you got the waterproof matches and flint. Let's see if that stuff's still inside here. Mm, there's some flints it looks like still on there. The matches are all gone. It'd be interesting to know how this stuff came to be used, if it was actually used in an actual mission, training mission, or, or whatnot. Sewing kit. It appears to still all be intact. That's pretty cool. Here's the uh, water purification tablets. Sure, three of 68. These are the iodine kind. More beef bouillon cubes. <clears throat> so four cubes total. Here's the fishing kit. Sounds like everything's still in there, at least Part of it. Looks like there's some hooks and uh, maybe some weight still on there. Okay, let's see. Let's open up the other part of this sleeve and see what else is still in here. So, candy, date, manufacturer, seven, seven, 1967. Most likely, I believe, if I remember, these are probably charms. Um, charms are used in most of the survival rations of the time, uh, even up, I think, till, and some of them till this day. Uh, they'd be fortified, just the charms candy. Some of them are fortified with extra vitamins and nutrients. But uh, that's what's more likely in there. Another candy, September 67. More likely, this is once again, feels like a block of charms. So two charms in there. Item 27. What are these? Since they're made in USA by Trojan brand. I wonder if these are the waterproof receptacles they were talking about. It's a little rubber band in there. I bet you that's what those are. You can use those to keep stuff dry. Here's some fishing line. This is the first time going through this kit. This is really pretty cool. Candle. Here's the candle. That's pretty cool. If you need some light or even as a good way to start a fire, this would have been great. Feels like maybe there's one or two in there. Kind of like a birthday candle. These two colored filters, I'm not sure exactly what these were for, other than maybe it's a light filter of some sort. Like I said, I can't find a lot of information. There's two little rubber bands in there with them, so it must have been intended to wrap this around something. The 
pilots would carry an angle head flashlight in their kit, but those usually came with their own red and blue lenses. But I suppose if you didn't have them, you could use this as a light filter. Here's the cake of soap, antibacterial. They gave you soap in both kits, so I guess they wanted you to really be clean out in the jungle. And then this appears to be our signaling mirror. These are, I've seen these go for some money just by themselves. So the fact this is in here is pretty cool. Yep, that's what that is, a signaling mirror. So if you were stuck, you know, in the jungle, or you got into a clearing and you, you saw maybe a bird dog search plane looking over, or Huey coming to find you, a jolly green giant, any of those, you could uh, reflect the sunlight up towards them uh, as a way to signal if you didn't, maybe the flare gun wasn't working, because this did, kit did come with a flare gun as well, or at least separately the pilots did carry it. Uh, but this was another way you could use to signal um, uh, aircraft search and rescue. I'm sure you could also use it to start a fire as well. So this is a pretty handy tool. So that's inside the Seek 2 survival kit, uh, like I said, carried by air crews uh, during the Vietnam War. One of the other items they would have carried in the uh, kit was the uh, survival knife. This was carried uh, on the vest as well. Uh, the sheath, I don't have the sheath of this knife, but the sheath was uh, built into the uh, vest. And you can use this if you got stuck, you know, coming down, your chute was caught in a tree, you could cut yourself down. It's got the saw side, so obviously this knife has a lot of utility. These are really popular with uh, ground troops, uh, LERP uh, patrols as well, because it's, it's small, lightweight, uh, and has a lot of utility to it. So, And lastly here, this air crew survival book. This one dates from the 80s, but... They would have used a similar one during the Vietnam War era. This was what um, air crews would have used during their survival training. All air crews go through it's a survival escape and evasion school. Uh, so if they are shot down, they do have the skills to survive. You can see on the front, this pilot, he's got the, air, the survival vest on. So this has all kinds of skills, navigation, um, signaling first aid here's a section on using the signaling mirror um, how to find food how to make different just different survival uh, shelters fires how to, uh, all that type of stuff so it's a pretty cool little pamphlet this was donated to me by a retired master sergeant ray howard worked with him at my last job he flew on AWAC flights during the 80s and 90s. He served 20 years in the Air Force, and this is something he donated to the museum, which I'm very grateful for. It's a really great piece of Cold War aircrew history. So that's what I have for now. I'm going to have a ration video probably coming up later today. It's getting near lunchtime. I figure I'll make a ration video as well today. So uh, questions, comments on the Seek 2, if you know any additional information on it, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching.